everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to do the yoke section of the Simply Sweet Raglan Baby Sweater. We end our collar at the center back of the sweater. And here's where I'm going to join the new color. So I'm going to knit with the new color and just pull that through, leaving a tail to weave in later. So I'm going to knit with the new color. Don't worry about that getting big like that. Now, when I make the next stitch, I'm going to pull these two tails nice and tight so that they don't flop around because the stitches get really floppy otherwise, right? And I'm going to actually put these two tails over my needle and hold them out of the way like that, okay? And then I'm going to knit this stitch. So that will, and when I do the next stitch too, see how that crossed them over the, the yarn? I'm gonna hold them again when I do the next stitch, just hold them down, do my next stitch, and now those two tails are locked in here. And that will keep the stitch from getting super floppy at the beginning and end of the round. Um, I may or may not leave them there when I do my weaving in, I might pull that back out, but for now it just holds it in place. So now I'm going to finish knitting this row all in this color. But as I do it, I'm going to make some increases to start the raglan shaping. So I said I was at the center back. The back has in this size 16 stitches. Um, I'm doing the smallest size. If you're doing a larger size, the pattern will tell you how many stitches to do, but I'm just explaining the math for the smallest size. So the back is 16 stitches, which means half of the back is eight stitches in this size. So I've done three. Here's four, five, six, seven. And now before I do my last stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and do an increase. Now I always want the increases to lean away from the seams or the markers or the center of the, the raglan shaping. So in this case, that means I want to, to lean to the right, okay? So I'm going to pick up this loop from the back to the front. Do you see that? I'll show you one more time. Pick it up from the back to the front like that. And you know you've done this right if the short edge of the loop, the short diagonal bar is on the front of the needle and the long horizontal bar is on the back of the needle. So I've picked that up, and now I'm always gonna go through the short horizontal part of the, the bar, the hardest one to get through, right? Because inserting my hook like that, do you see how it makes the loop twist a little bit at the back there? That is what gives you an increase without a hole, is that that loop twists back there. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit it, and that is a make one right increase. Now I do have a full tutorial on that um, that you can look at, and I will link that in the pattern and in the description on this video if you're watching it on YouTube. So that was my first increase, and it goes this way, to the right. So now I'm going to knit basically what's gonna end up being like the center stitch of the, the raglan seam. Um, so now I have, I had eight stitches on this half of the back, now I have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's the one I added, which is eight, and nine. Okay, I'm gonna place a marker, and now we've come to the first shoulder, the first sleeve. So I'm actually going to do the same thing with one st stitch, knit just plain up against the marker. So that gives me a nice two stitch seam that is not interrupted by increases. That's going to give me those, those straight lines down the raglan um, shaping. So now I want to do another increase. Well, in this case, I want it to go away from that marker again, but this time that means it's to the left, okay? So if a right increase was lifting this way, a left increase is lifting the opposite way. You go from the front to the back and you lift it. Now notice that the horizontal bar is across the front and that little tiny diagonal bar is across the back. Well, guess which part we're going to knit through? The little tiny diagonal bar in the back. So I knit through the back leg like that. See how that makes the stitch cross again? And now we have our increase there, okay? So now the sleeve caps each have eight stitches. So I'm going to knit 
almost to the end. I'm going to knit to the last stitch of the sleeve cap. So I had the one there, right? So I've got seven more. This is the one we added. So I've done one already. I've got seven more, but I don't want to knit that last one. I want to leave that last one. So I'm going to do six more. Two, three, four, five, six. And you don't have to work out this math. All those numbers are in the pattern. I'm just explaining where they came from. So this is going to be the center of our next seam. And I'm calling it a seam even though it's not sewn, but it, it looks visually like a seam. So this is where I'm going to do an increase. And again, away from that seam, so we're going to do a right increase. So pick it up from the back, knit through the front loop, and that's the right increase. Knit that last stitch for the sleeve, and now we should have increased two stitches on the sleeve between these markers. So we had eight, we should now have 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good. Now we're going across the front and the front has 16 stitches in it. So again, same thing. We're going to knit the first stitch and then do an increase. And this time it's going to be the left increase. So we come in from the front and we knit through the back. And then we're going to knit almost to the end. So if there were 16 and I've already done one, I'm going to do 14 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, and fourteen. Okay. I'm going to do another increase, and this time it's got to go to the right, so I come in from the back, come in from the back, knit through the front. Okay, knit that last stitch for the front, and now we should have increased the front from 16 to 18. So let's see if we did. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 stitches in the front. That should leave us with the last half of the back and the next sleeve. So let's knit the first stitch of the next sleeve, do the left leaning increase, which is from front to back, and then knit through the back. Okay. Knit the six more stitches on the sleeve. Okay, do the other increase, which is from back to front. The right leaning increase and then knit the last stitch for the sleeve. Now that sleeve, just like the other one, should have gone from eight stitches to 10. We have two, four, six, eight, ten stitches. Now all that's left is eight stitches from the back and we're going to do the increase only on this side because this is the center of the back. We don't need an increase there, right? So this increase, first we're gonna knit the one stitch to get the one plain stitch. And then this increase needs to lean to the left. So we go in from the front, knit through the back, and that is the last of our increases. And then I knit across to the end of the row. Okay, so now this has gone from eight to nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. So if I put the back together, I've got nine on this side, nine on that side, and this is where the little flap overlaps. So zooming out, now that we've got the markers in place, let me get this cord over, you can see we have a sleeve here, we have the back here, another sleeve here, and then the front here. So this is the shape of the sweater. These are the sleeves, this is the back and the front. And it will become more of a pyramid shape as we start doing the rest of these increases. Now you may wonder why I haven't been doing that nice slip stitch edge when I did the color change. Well, the reason is because the color change can make it look a little funky. Like if you did a purl into this stitch, you would get a weird purl bump just like these in the opposite color that poked through. So it's easiest to just not worry about the edge, doing that slip stitch edge right where you've got the color change. 
And then after this row, we're going to be working in the round, so we won't need to worry about it anyway. So to do this wrong side row, we're literally just purling every stitch all the way across. And when we come to the marker, we're just going to slip it. slip the marker and keep going all the way across the row. I've reached the end of purling all the way across the row and I'm going to turn. Now we're going to start working in rounds. So we're not going to be turning anymore. We're always going to be on the right side. We're always going to be knitting. This first round looks very much like a row because we haven't joined anything yet. But at the end of this, we're not going to turn anymore after we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and knit to one stitch before the marker because we're going to do increases on this row, on this round. We now are going to do increases every alternate round, um, so every two rounds, until we get to the stitch counts that we want. And now we don't have to count anymore because we have the markers to tell us where to go. So we go to one stitch before the marker. We're going to do the increase away from the marker. So that means I go in from the back to the front and knit through the front. Okay, that's my make one right. Then I knit the stitch, slip the marker, knit the stitch, right? Because that's our two stitches of straight knitting in between the increases. And then I'm going to do the other increase, the make one left, by going in from the front and knitting through the back leg. And then I keep going around, just knitting until I get to the next marker, and I do that whole thing again. So it's make one right, then knit one stitch, slip the marker, knit one stitch, and make one left. So let's see that again. Make one right. Oops, split the yarn there. There we go. Knit one stitch, slip the marker, knit one stitch, and then make one left. And that is the formula for the increases all the way through the rest of the yoke. As long as you're doing increases, it's going to be done that same way. You knit to the marker, and then you do that same combination of the right and then the left increases. So I'm just knitting across the front now, getting to the marker. Okay, I've got the same combination, so make one, oh, make one right, knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one left, and knit across to the marker, or to one stitch before the marker, I mean. And one last time, we are going to make one right, knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one left, and then knit all the way to the end of our row. Now the instructions say, I forgot whether I wrote join to work in the round or um, continue working in the round. But either way, there are fancy ways to join to work in the round when you're working from a cast on edge. In this case, we're working from a piece of fabric that's already established and you have a tail here that you can use to sew things shut if you need to. So there's no reason to do any funky mechanics to get a nice smooth join in the round. Honestly, I'm not doing any of that. I am just continuing to work in the round for the next round. And that's that's it. I'm just I just keep going around. Rather than turning my work, I'm just going to work the next stitch in the beginning of the next round. One thing I do want to do is to place a stitch marker to let me know that this is the beginning of the round so I don't lose track of that once I'm working in the rounds. Notice that this stitch marker is very different from the stitch markers I'm using for the increase because I don't accidentally want to start doing increases in the middle of the back. So I use a different stitch marker to mark the beginning of the round 
And for this round, since we just did a round of increases, we're now going to do just knitting around. So I'm just literally going to knit in every stitch and make sure that join that you pull it kind of tight so that it doesn't get too loose on you. And just knit every single stitch all the way around for this round. I finished the round and made it back around to the stitch marker. One thing I forgot to mention, when you join in the round, make sure you're not twisting your work. Make sure that you can lay it flat with everything pointing the same way, just like this, before you start working around. Because if you add a twist, you'll never be able to remove the twist later. You'll have to rip it back out to this point. You may want to add a lifeline before you start working in the round, before you start this row. Um, just in case you find that you have to rip it back out. But this is what it should look like after we've joined in the round and worked a round of knitting. So you've got your sleeves here, you've got the back here with the little button flap that goes over the top of the collar, and then you've got the front here. Now we've just done a row without any increases, so next we're going to do a row with increases. And it's the same as what we've been doing, except now we're working in the round, so we're just going to continue working around in a circle instead of doing a row. Again, we're just going to knit all the way until one stitch before the marker. Make one right, being careful not to split the yarn. It's very easy to split the yarn on these make one increases. Knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one left. And then knit all the way around to the next marker. We have four markers, so we're gonna do that four times. Got one stitch left before the marker, so we make one right. Knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one left. And knit around to the next marker. And that's pretty much the pattern for the whole yoke. You will reach a point where you have made enough increases and then you might have to knit just a few rows of plain stockinette without any increases to get the length that we need before we separate for the arms. But until you reach the increase level that you need, this is basically the entire pattern for the yoke. So that was the front that I just got all the way across. Now I'm going to make one right. Knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one left, and knit across to the end, or to the next marker. My tails were getting in my way. Okay, make one right. Knit one. Slip the marker, knit one, make one left. And knit across, and I think this is the last one, so we just knit to the end. And you know it's the end when you see your round marker. And I actually used a round marker for my round marker, as opposed to the square markers for the increases. 
So that is my end of round marker, which means that I have finished this round. Um, and that's the pattern. The next round will be no increases, then another round with increases, and you keep going like that. Now, if I zoom out, you can start to see what it looks like where we're doing the increases. You can start to see that pattern. Here we go. Let's zoom in on that. You can start to see that pattern of two straight stitches and then the increases flaring out away from it. And that's what the what the whole yoke section is going to look like. Here you can see it again. Two center stitches and then the increases flare away from it. So we're building the sleeve caps as well as the front and back. We're basically doing the increases for the front and back and increasing out these shoulders, these sleeve caps as we go. So in the end, the sweater will sit like this. And that is the yoke of the raglan baby sweater. Now, one thing when you end at the end of a round, you may want to end one stitch before or one stitch after so you don't lose your marker or take your marker out and set it aside because um, at the, if the marker is loose on the needle like that, you're going to end up losing it. Or put a cap on your needle, something like that. One quick tip for knowing whether you're on an increase row or a not increase row. I've just done an increase and if you're familiar enough with it, you can tell that that's the increase and so you know that you've just done it and now you're on a not increase row. But an easier way to tell, because this is not exactly the easiest thing to decipher, an easier way to tell is just to count the rows. So the last row I did was in this color was a round I did was round one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Remember our first round in this color, we did the increases. So that means all the odd numbered rounds in this color, we're going to do increases. So one, two, three, four, five, we must have done an increase on round five. Now I'm on round six, so that means I don't do any increases. So that is how you do the raglan shaping for the yoke of this baby sweater. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, or leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos. Thanks for watching.